Hello friends, today we are going to start the discussion on chapter 5, Bond, Bond Valuation and Interest Rate. Uh, this is the part 1 of this chapter and we are going to discuss the key terms. Thank you. A bond is a debt instrument in which an investor loans money to the entity, typically a corporate or governmental, which borrows the funds for a defined period of time at a variable or fixed interest rate. Bonds are used by companies, municipalities, states and sovereign governments to raise the money and finance a variety of projects and activities. Owners of the bonds are debt holders or creditors of the issuer. A bond issuer is the party that borrows the money, example the corporation and governments. Bond holder is a party that lends the money, example, the investor. There are four main types of bonds, the treasury bond, corporate bond, municipal bond, and foreign bond. Investors have many choices when investing in bonds, but bonds are mainly classified into these four categories. Each type differs with respect to expected return and degree of risk. Treasury bonds, sometimes referred to as governmental bonds, are issued by the U.S. federal government. It is reasonable to assume that the federal government will make good on its promised payments, so these bonds have almost no default risk. Default risk is also called the credit risk. However, the Treasury bonds' prices decline when the interest rate rises, so they are not free from all kinds of risks. Federal agencies and other government-sponsored entities, GSE, include the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Small Business Administration, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the Federal Home Loan Bank System, among others. Agency debt and GSE debt are not officially backed by the full faith and the credit of the U.S. government, but investors assume that the government implicitly guarantees these debts, so these bonds carry interest rates only slightly higher than the treasury bonds. Corporate bonds. Corporate bonds, as the name implies, are issued by the corporations. Unlike the treasury bonds, corporate bonds are exposed to default risk. If the issuing company gets into trouble, it may be unable to make the promised interest and the principal payments. Different corporate bonds have different levels of default risk depending on the issuing company's characteristics and the terms of the specific bond. Um, the larger the credit risk or the default risk, the higher the interest rate issuer must pay. Municipal bonds. Municipal bonds, which are also called munis, are issued by the state and local governments. Like the corporate bonds, munis have a default risk. However, munis offer one major advantage. The interest earned on most municipal bonds is exempt from the federal taxes and also from the state taxes if the holder is the resident of the issuing state. Consequently, the municipal bonds carry interest rates that are considerably lower than those of the corporate bonds with the same default risk. Last but not the least is the foreign bonds. Foreign bonds are issued by the foreign governments or the foreign corporations. Foreign corporate bonds are of course exposed to the default risk and so are some foreign government bonds. An additional risk exists if the bonds are denominated in the currency other than the investor's home currency. For example, if the U.S. investor purchases a corporate bond denominated by a Japanese yen, and if the yen subsequently falls relative to the dollar, then the investor will lose the money even if the company does not default on its bonds. Now we are going to discuss some key characteristics of the bonds. Par value. Par value is stated face value of the bond. For illustrative purposes, we generally assume a par value of 1000. 
Par value is the amount of money that the firm borrows and promises to pay back at the maturity date. Coupon payment or coupon interest rate. Coupon payment is equal to the interest payment. Um, every bond requires a company to pay a fixed number of dollars of interest every year or more typically every six months. When this coupon payment as it is called is divided by the par value the result is the coupon interest rate. The coupon payment which is fixed at the time of the bond is issued remains in force during the life of the bond. In some cases a bond co bond's coupon payment will vary over time. For these floating rate bonds the coupon rate is set for say initial six months period after which it is adjusted every six months based on some market rate. Floating rate debt is popular with investors who are worried about the risk of rising interest rates because the interest paid on such bonds increases whenever market rate rise. This stabilizes the market value of the debt and it is also provides institutional buyers such as banks with income that is better geared to their own obligations. Banks deposit costs rise with interest rates so the income on floating rate loans they have made rises at the same time as their deposit costs rise. The floating rate debt appeals to the corporations that want to issue long-term debt without committing themselves to paying a historically high interest rate for the entire life of a loan. Zero coupon bonds. Some bonds pay no coupons at all but are offered at a substantial discount below their par values and hence provide capital appreciation rather than the interest income. These securities are called zero coupon bonds. Most zero coupon bonds are treasury bonds. Um, some bonds are issued with a coupon to coupon rate that is too low for the bond to be issued at the par. So the bond is issued at a price less than its par value. In general, any bond originally offered at price significantly below its par value is called the original issue discount OID bond. Some bonds don't pay cash coupons but pay coupons consisting of additional bonds. These are called payment in kind bonds or just pick bonds. Pick bonds are usually issued by companies with cash flow problems which makes them very risky. Some bonds have set up provisions. If a company bond rating is downgraded then it must increase the bonds coupon rate. Step ups are more popular in Europe. The downgrade means that it is having trouble servicing its debt and the step up will accelerate the problem. Maturity date. Maturity date is the date when the par value must be repaid. Bonds generally have a specified maturity date on which the par value must be repaid. Uh, most bonds have original maturities, the maturity at the time the bond is issued, ranging from 10 to 40 years, but any maturity date is legally permissible. Most corporate bonds contain a call provision, which gives the issuing corporation the right to call the bond for redemption. A majority of the municipal bonds also contain a call provision. Although the U.S. Treasury no longer issues callable bonds, some past Treasury issues were callable. The call provision generally states that the company must pay the bondholders an amount greater than the par value if they are called. The additional sum, which is termed as a call premium, is often set equal to one year's interest if the bonds are called during the first year, and the premium declines at the constant rate of interest divided by the number of years left. The bonds are often not callable until several years, generally five to ten years, after they are issued. This is known as a deferred call, and the bonds are said to have call protection. 
Suppose a company sold bonds when interest rates were relatively high. Provided the issue is callable, a company could sell a new issue of low yielding securities if and when interest rates drop. If it could then use the proceeds of the new issue to retire the high rate issue and thus reduce the interest expense. This is called the refunding operation. A call provision is valuable to the firm but potentially detrimental to the investors. If the interest rate goes up, the company will not call the bond and the investor will be stuck with the original coupon rate on the bond even though interest rates in the economy have risen sharply. However, if the interest rate falls, the company will call the bond and pay off investors, who then must reinvest the proceeds at the current market interest rate, which is lower than the rate they were getting on the original bond. In other words, the investor loses when the interest goes up, but doesn't reap the gains when the rates fall down. To induce an investor to take this type of risk, a new issue of callable bonds must provide a higher coupon rate than otherwise similar issue of the non-callable bonds. Bonds that are redeemable at par at the holder's option protect the investors against rise of interest rates. If the rates rise, the price of the fixed rate bonds decline. Event risk. Event risk is a chance that some sudden event will occur and increase the credit risk of the company, hence lowering the firm's bond rating and the value of its outstanding bonds. Investors' concern over event risk means that those firms deemed most likely to face events that could harm hold the bondholders must pay extremely high rate of interest. To reduce that rate of interest, some bonds have covenant called super poison cut put, which enables a bondholder to turn in or put the bond back to the issuer at par in the event of takeover, merger, and major recapitalization. Some bonds have whole make, make whole call provision. This allows the company to call the bond, but it may pay a call price that is essentially equal to the market price of the similar non-callable bonds. This provides companies with an easy way to repurchase bonds as part of financial restructuring such as merger.